We heard the dragon wren shout from here. You defeated him? I feared as much. I thought it was him we saw flying east after your battle. We are not warriors. What is overlooked in the Dragonborn is not permitted to any other followers of the Way of the Voice. You misunderstand our authority. The Greybeards have never involved themselves in political affairs. I see. The dragon will lead you to Aldwyn, but without the Jarl's help. Parthenax has made the decision to help you. This is the road we have to walk. Even the Greybeards must bend to the winds of change, it seems. So be it. Tell Ulfric and General Tullius that the Greybeards wish to speak to them. We will see if they still remember us. Deliver the message to the warring party. Eat our food, you pollute our city with your stink, and you refuse to help the Stormcloaks. But we haven't taken a side because it's not our fight. Hey, maybe the reason these Grayskins don't help in the war is because they're Imperial spies. Imperial spies? You can't be serious. It's no secret the Aretino boy is doing some ritual, trying to call the Dark Brother. But who's going to stop him? Aldrif won't give us a straight answer. He's a true Nord. He'll come around. Don't be so sure of that. We've intercepted couriers from Solitude. The Empire's putting a great deal of pressure on the White Only Lord. the foolish or the courageous approach a Jarl without summons. Do I know you? Ah, yes. Destined for the chopping block, if I'm not mistaken. A fair point. Well, you've come to the right place then. Speak with Galmar. I'm always looking for able fighters. Not everyone can say they made it out of Helgen. Seems we're all branded villains these days. So long as your criminal past stays in the past, and you fight for me with honor and integrity, we'll welcome you into our ranks. And what would you have me do? If he's not with us, he's against us. He knows that. They all know that. How long are Speak you Speak with Garmat. It's about time they turned their gaze from the heavens back to our bleeding homeland. What do they want? I have the greatest respect for the Greybeards, of course. And the dragon attacks are a growing plague. But the political situation is still delicate. Not all the Jarls are fully committed to supporting me as High King. I can't afford to appear weak. I can't agree to this unless Tullius himself will be there. I can't agree to any peace council until I know Tullius will be there. The other Jarls could take that as a sign of weakness. I don't need you to teach me how to play high politics in Skyrim. But... You're right. There's nothing to be gained by refusing the Greybeard's request. Yes. I'll give Tullius one more chance to quit Skyrim with his tail between his legs. You think I need to send Bolgroth a stronger message? 
If by message you mean shoving a sword through his gullet. We got the nickname. I wish only to graduate and enroll with the Legion. My drums will lead our troops to victory. I have to wonder, what does the Dragonborn do once he's been summoned by the Gravians? Disrespect the law when you did. Don't suppose. Huh? You heard of Raven Scar? Cave on the island. I the remember you. You were at Helgen. Speak to Legged Ricca. I suspect we could use someone like you. I see. Then there's nothing further to discuss. If you ch the Greybeards, what do those old hermits want with me? Why? There's nothing to discuss as long as that traitor Ulfric is in arms against his rightful emperor. They are getting to be a problem. But I wasn't sent to Skyrim to fight dragons. My job is to quell this rebellion, and I intend to do just that. Dragons or no dragons. I'll be the judge of that. Besides, by all rep- Has he? I suppose he doesn't want to miss a chance to bluster about the Empire's many crimes. He's probably hoping I'll refuse so he can blame the Empire for being unreasonable. I think I'll have to disappoint him yet again. Yes, yes, fine, I'll come to this Greybeard Council. For all the good it will do. I'm telling you, Ulfric's planning an attack on Whiterun. He'd be insane to try. He doesn't. The Greybeards have called a peace council at High Rothgar. Men of violence are gathered here, in these halls whose very stones are dedicated to peace. I should not have agreed to host this council. The Greybeards have no business involving ourselves in such matters. Yes, yes. Which is why I allowed this violation of all our traditions. But regrets are pointless. Here we are. Take your seat at the council table, and let us see what wisdom we can find among these warriors of Skyrim. So, Arn Gear, is it? You know why we're here. Are you going to let us in or not? You are not invited here. You are not welcome here. We have as much right to be at this council as all of you. More, actually, since we were the ones that put the Dragonborn on this path. Were you? Hubris of the Blades truly knows no bounds.
Now that everyone is here, please take your seats so we can begin. I hope that we have all come no. here in the spirit you of... you insult us by bringing her to this negotiation? Your chief Talos hunter? That didn't take long. Hear, hear. I have every right to be at this negotiation. I need to ensure that nothing is agreed to here that violates the terms of the White Gold Concordat. She's part of the Imperial delegation. You can't dictate who I bring to this council. Please. If we have to negotiate the terms of the negotiation, we will never get anywhere. Perhaps this would be a good time to get the Dragonborn's input on this matter. By Izmir's beard. The nerve of those Imperial bastards, eh? To think that I would sit down at the same table with that. Thou more bitch. Either she walks or I do. Maybe so, but bringing her here is a deliberate provocation. Talius needs to know I won't be pushed around. Hmm. It feels like a mistake to me. But I'll bow to your judgment on this. But she is to observe nothing more. We are not negotiating with her. Is that clear? Elfric, why so hostile? After all, it's not the Thalmor that's burning your farms and killing your sons. She's supposed to be on our side? You know exactly... No. Not this time. Now that that's settled, may we proceed? I have something to say first. Here we go. The only reason I agreed to attend this council was to deal with the Dragon Menace. There's nothing else to talk about. Unless the Empire is finally ready to renounce its unjust claim to rule over the free people of Skyrim. I knew he wouldn't We're be able to resist. To a temporary truce to allow the Dragonborn here to deal with the dragons, nothing more. I consider even talking to the Empire a generous gesture. Are you done? Did you just come here to make speeches, or can we get down to business? Yes, let's get this over with. Are we ready to proceed? Jarl Ulfric, General Tullius, this council is unprecedented. We are gathered here at the Dragonborn's request. I ask that you all respect the spirit of High Hrothgar, and do your best to begin the process of achieving a lasting peace in Skyrim. Who would like to open the negotiations? Yes, let's get down to it. We want control of Markarth. That's our price for agreeing to a truce. So that's why you're here, Ulfric? You dare to insult the Greybeards by using this council to advance your own position? Jarl Elisif. General, this is outrageous. You can't be taking this demand seriously. I thought we were here to discuss a truce. Elisif, I said I'd handle it. Ulfric, you can't seriously expect us to give up Markarth at the negotiating table. You hope to gain in council what you've been unable to take in battle, is that it? I'm sure Jarl Ulfric does not expect something for nothing. Yes, that'd be entirely out of character. I want in return. Wait, General, you don't intend to just hand over Markarth to that... traitor? This is how the Empire repays us for our loyalty? Enough! First, let's be clear. This council wasn't my idea. I think it's a waste of time. You are a traitor to the Empire, and deserve a traitor's death. But I at least will negotiate in good faith. Since we're all here at your request, I'd like to hear what you think Markarth is worth. In exchange for Markarth, the source of most of Skyrim silver. Hardly. Riften seems like a better choice to me. Well fortified, easily resupplied from across Lake Honric. Plus all the mead we can drink.
Not enough to outweigh the loss of Markarth. With the reach in enemy hands, our whole position in solitude would be threatened. I'm glad you agree. I was starting to wonder whose side you were on here. You heard the man, Ulfric. We've made you a fair offer. Are you serious about these talks, or are you just here to posture? I expect the better from you, Dragonborn. I came here in good faith, and now it seems you held the Empire at every turn. As for you, General Tullius, I see now that Garmar was right. Talking to the Empire is just as useless as ever. If you think you can hold Markarth, you're as deluded as your Emperor when he signed away our freedom to Lothalmor. Skyrim will never again bow to your false empire. Let's go, Garmar. I should have listened to you in the first place. You always were a fool, Ulfric. You're no better at diplomacy than you are in the battlefield. Stop! Are you so blind to our danger that you can't see past your pity disagreements? Here you sit arguing about nothing, while the fate of the land hangs in the balance. Is he with you, Delphi? If so, I advise you to tell him to watch his tongue. He is with me. And I advise you both to listen to what he has to say before you do anything rash. Don't you understand the danger? Don't you understand what the return of the dragons means? Alduin has returned, the world eater. Even now he devours the souls of your fallen comrades. He grows more powerful with every soldier slain in your pointless war. Can you not put aside your hatred for even one moment in the face of this mortal danger? A very pretty speech. But what does Shut it have up. to do with the... If he's right about Alden, we both have just as much to lose here, Tullius. Remember that. Now, back to the matter at hand. Don't hand me a mug of sheep's piss and call it meat. These terms are still not acceptable. I'm sure you have something in mind. Damn right we do. You surrender your march to us, and take Idgrod Ravencrone with you. Sorely the Builder will take over as Jarl of Morthal. Where do these demands stop, Ulfric? Do you expect me to surrender all of Skyrim? It seems I have no choice but to let the Dragonborn decide. Although I'm starting to doubt your fairness. What say you, Dragonborn? <sighs> Even the Dragonborn betrays Skyrim. These terms are not acceptable. You know that. I'm listening. Don't play dumb, Tullius. Bah! This is a waste of time. I can see that we won't get better terms from this council. So be it. The sons of Skyrim at least put the greater good above our own interests. It seems we may have an agreement. Jarl Ulfric, General Tullius, these are the terms currently on the table. Markarth will be handed over to Ulfric's forces, Jarl Edmund will step down, and Thangvor Silverblood will become the Jarl of Markarth. The Stormcloaks will withdraw from the Rift, allowing Imperial troops unhindered access. Jarl Leila Lawgiver will step down, and Maven Blackbriar will become the Jarl of Riften. You both agree to this? I shouldn't agree to terms that so blatantly favor the Empire. I have no choice, though, under the circumstances. But once Aldwin is defeated, then it will be the Empire's turn. Remember Evgir Unslan. You should be pleased, Alisif. You've done well for yourself as the Empire's pet yard. But beware, the Empire's loyalty is fickle. They will tire of this war, and then I will be the one dictating terms to you. I have nothing to say to that murderer. General, you've proven yourself a good friend to Skyrim. I continue to trust that you will do your utmost to safeguard our interests. Thank you, Jarl Elisif. I appreciate your loyalty. The Empire can live with these terms, yes, for a temporary truce, until the Dragon Menace is dealt with. After that, Ulfric, there will be a reckoning. Count on it. Come on, Delmar. We have a lot of work to do. 
Giving up Markarth is a price for this truce, Dragonborn. I hope it was worth it. <laughs> Jarl Balgruf, I assume you are familiar with the Dragonborn's plan? Yes, I'm ready to do my part. Just say the I'm word. I'm afraid there's a problem. And my men will help a serious one. Trap. I've discovered who the Greybeard's leader really is. All well and good, but did you know that he was Alduin's chief lieutenant in ancient times? Responsible for terrible atrocities. It's true that his crimes are long in the past, but justice does not count the passage of years. The Blades have been hunting him for centuries, but he was protected by the Greybeards and then the Emperors. Justice demands that he die for his crimes. Until he is dead, I'm afraid my oath as a Blade prevents me from offering you aid and comfort. I anticipated the problem. While you were arranging this meeting, I was busy in the library of Skyhaven Temple, an unguessed trove of lost lore. But the important thing is that the Blades recorded many of the names of dragons they slew. Cross-referencing this with Delphine's map of dragon burial sites, I believe I've identified one of the dragons that Alduin has raised up. Ah, uh, don't you see? The names of dragons are always three words of power, shouts. By calling the dragon with the voice, he will hear you wherever he might be. He's not compelled to, but dragons are prideful by nature and loath to refuse a challenge. Your voice in particular is likely to intrigue this dragon after your victory over Aldrin. I think it's very likely that he will be unable to resist investigating your call. Ah, indeed. I'm no master of the voice, like these worthy gentlemen. But it is written here, in this scroll. Oda Ving. Winged Snow Hunter, as I read it. The difficulty remains how to lure a dragon to Dragon's Reach at all. Well, that's an excellent question. You haven't overlooked that little detail, have you? Ah, I believe I can be. May the gods watch over your battles, friend. As I promised, my men stand ready. The great chains are oiled. We wait on your word. My men know what to do. Make sure you do your part. I'm putting my city in your hands. Another wanderer, here to lick my father's boots. Good job. You do have a plan for luring a dragon here, yeah? We're 
ready when you are. Vaza, an apt phrase, Alduin Boval. One reason I came to your call was to test your thorn for myself. Many of us have begun to question Alduin's lordship, whether his thorn was truly the strongest. Among ourselves, of course, Muni Maie, none were yet ready to openly defy him. Once Lord Croesus, innumerable pardons, I digress. He has traveled to Sovngarde to regain his strength, devouring the Silesure, the souls of the mortal dead, a privilege he jealously guards. His door to Sovngarde is at Skaldafen, one of his ancient fanes high in the eastern mountains. Binduran pa ok avarantil. I surely do not need to warn you that all his remaining strength is marshaled there. Zuulost ofan hinlan. Now that I have answered your question, you will allow me to go free? Um, serve you? No. Need id. If and when you defeat Alduin, I will reconsider. Hmm, Croesus. There is one detail about Skaldafen I neglected to mention. Only this. You have the Thurm of Adova. But without the wings of one, you will never set foot in Skaldafen. Of course, I could fly you there, but not while imprisoned like this. Indeed, Orin Britro, 
I cannot leave here until you defeat Alduin, which you cannot do without my help. You have reconsidered my offer, hmm? Onikankron? You will release me, Rolan, if in return I promise to take you to Skaldafen and stop helping Alduin? Onikan Korav Gain Merad. It is wise to recognize when you only have one choice. And you can trust me. Zuni Tarudis. Alduin has proven himself unworthy to rule. I go my own way now. Free me, and I will carry you to Skaldafin. Incredible. Uh, sir, you have no idea how long I have waited for such an opportunity. I would be most appreciative if you would permit me to perform some, uh, tests on you, purely in the interests of the advancement of knowledge. Be gone, mage. Oh. Do not test my promise to the Dovahkiin. I assure you, you will not even notice me. Most of them are hardly painful at all to a large dragon such as yourself. Farangar, very bad idea, even for you. Surely you wouldn't miss a few scales, or a small amount of blood. To me, what are you doing back there? Something to t You sure about that? You want to let that dragon loose after all the trouble to catch him in there? Your funeral. Someone else is gonna have to help you get him back in there again. Get ready to open the trap. This seems like a really bad idea to me. Carry on, soldier. This is all part of the Dragonborn's plan. I can't believe that. You sure about that? Your funeral. Someone else is gonna have to help you get him back in there again. He's ready to open the trap. This seems like a really bad idea to me. Carry on, soldier. This is all part of the Dragonborn's plan. What's new? Dein Rufe, Astval. Dein Rufe, Astval. Are you ready to see the world as only a Dover can?
Saran Uth, I await your command as promised. Are you ready to see the world as only a Dova can? Zukbrit Uth, I warn you, once you've flown the skies of Kaisal, your envy of the Dove will only increase. Amativ, mu bo kotin stinselok. This is as far away. 